Hello, welcome back. Um, we are now in part three. Um, we're already up to the uh, stage now where we're about to remove the uh, final uh, two springs from the drum and uh, hopefully then I should be able to get the entire drum out of the machine pulling it towards the front. The, as in part two we removed the bolts from the shock absorbers underneath and all the other wiring and associated hoses are now removed from the drum as well. So it's just a matter now of those final springs to be removed and then I can should be able to pull the drum forwards and upwards out of the machine. So let's see if we can do that. Put the camera back over here while I attempt to get the last bit of drum work done and remove it from the machine. So I will first of all remove this spring. Right, so now we've dropped, basically dropped right down onto the final spring. So let's get that one out. There's the other spring. And now the big spring. This is the final one. I don't know how much difficulty this one's going to give me. Let's lift the drum back up a bit. Maybe it's going to be easier if we get it out that way. Yeah, it is. There we go. So there we go. That's now completely detached inside here. Now the fun part. I need to try now to pull this forwards and out. So I can get that hose out of my way. And we will see. I'm sure it should come out this way. Oh, that hose is stopping it. Ah, oh, that's it. Okay, there we go. The drum is out. That's it. So. Here we go, first time ever in my life that I've removed the drum out of a washing machine. And now what remains to do is I have to split this tub in half, which is basically a series of bolts that go all the way around. And there are some clamps, little clips as well. Here are the shock absorbers, which do seem a little bit uh, if that camera will focus. They do seem a little wee bit um, oily. It's possible that they might not be any good anymore, I'm not sure. Again, same with that one, it looks like that one might have leaked as well. That probably would explain why the drum was so loose maybe. So we can see the heater in there through the hole, which isn't scaled up, uh, strangely enough. But the real um, test of this is going to see what the spider looks like in the back of the drum. So what I'm going to have to do is now move that there case backwards slightly to give me a bit more room. In fact I might do this in the front part of the room. That's what I might do. So we'll bring the drum into the front, into the other half of the room. Okay. What I'll need then is a 10mm spanner by the looks of it with some socket extensions on. I 
think it's a 10 millimeter anyway. The other ones have been. Yeah, it is. So, let's start taking these off. pump seal in between these as well. Now some people say that you're supposed to replace that drum uh, tub seal when you split the drum apart. What I might do as well is get a towel to put this on. Just to protect the carpet a bit better. We'll just move it to one side, put this towel down. remaining of these So we've got 14 bolts going around this this tub. One of them's still stuck in here because it's a bit, been, it's a bit tight still, so I can do that one. Right, and then we have some clips as well. Aha! There we go. So there we have the one half of the drum removed. And 
and we can see inside there that's fairly clean really considering that this is 11 years old I always have tried to look after the machine but now this is going to be the revealing part because we're about to now have a look at the spider on the back of the drum and this is the part that quite often fails especially on American washers the large capacities the spiders were failing very very quickly on some of those machines corroding through the spider is the weak point on the front loader so now you can see it before I do. Well, how about that? It's actually in really good condition. It has corroded somewhat. Um, you can see it on the, well, I can see it on the seal. Yeah. So I'll just put the drum. onto the carpet there and we will have a look I will focus in on that, I'll just get my finger cleaned off because it's covered in grease but there we go that is what they call the spider now that is in very good condition for a machine of 11 years old some people's machines uh, corrode through these um, aluminium, well it's like a cast sort of uh, very, very... It's not a stainless steel part, this drum spider isn't. And a lot of the time they actually corrode away and go all powdery and literally they break off across these arms. And once that spider breaks, that's it, you have to have a new spider. On this machine it looks quite simple is that uh, you have one bolt on each leg of that spider to be able to remove it and they're about set well they were about 70 quid to buy these spiders were so essentially that's in good condition it's not too bad at all I might um, have a look at removing the bolts from here but I don't know how easily they will remove or if they'll break off because I want to have a look at the other side of that spider as well but looking at this side I mean it's it's got um, deposits on here but it's not really corroded so I think all we all we have with this machine really is an issue of drum bearing wear. I mean that is a little bit of a mess inside there look. That's the bottom basically so we can see there is a lot of uh, deposits on here. This is basically grease and washing powder that's built up over the years on the seal. So what what we need to do basically is to, to remove, remove the bearings we need to get that seal out and I'm not sure the easiest way of getting that out, to be honest. Could be that we have to hammer it from the reverse side. Hammer the bottom bearing out down there first, and then turn this over and then hammer this one out from behind. And basically that should force the this bearing cover out. So what I'm going to try and attempt to do, I have seen this done, is to get a hammer and a screwdriver onto the outer edge of that bottom bearing there and try and knock that out. I have got screws in the bottom of here which keep this away from the carpet so that the bearing should drop out. Let's have a go shall we, see if we can remove that bearing. I'll put the camera up here and focus it down. Like that. Let's see if I can pull it a little bit further towards here. 
Right, let's see. The camera battery is starting to run down now, so I'm going to have to see if I can make this a little bit quick. I need my screwdriver, wherever that is. Here it is. So, I'm going to put my screwdriver against the bottom edge of that bearing. And knock it. And that's pretty much destroyed the bearing straight away. Which, as I presumed it would. But we need to be able to knock it out. It's not going to shift. So this was the part I feared that I wouldn't be able to do is to get the bearing out. doesn't want to know. It's uh, really, really, really... Absolutely stinks this does as well in there. Doesn't want to know. It's not moving at all. That bearing is very, very securely um, pressed into there. I think what L LG have done is to put a re irremovable bearing. Mind you, I suppose everything's removable, but you pretty much have got to destroy the damn thing to get it out. So I think it's curtains for this machine. I'm not going to be able to replace, I'm not going to be able to get the bearing out. Unfortunately. But at least we get to see how to disassemble one of these things. Sadly, that's the end of the life of this machine. I'm not able to get the bearing out. The front, the bearing cover, the bearing seal probably would come out. Yeah, it does. So we can, we can see the bearing seal there, that came out quite easily. Now I'd imagine that trying to knock this big one out would be an absolute pain to do as well. It has got the, uh, the size of the bearing on here, I can see. Can't see what the size is though, it's a little bit small for me to read it. It says KBC on there, um, Korea, and what looks like 6306U. 6306U. That doesn't look like a bearing size. Maybe it is, I don't know. Yeah, I can hear the noise. So they are rather noisy. Well, that one is anyway. I can hear the noises and trying to turn it round. There is a slight bit of play on there as well. Yeah. So that bearing there is worn. And this one on the back 
have we got a size on this one? That looks like 63052. And obviously because I've tried to whack that from the inside, it has um Oh dear. Damage the bearing now, so I couldn't even put it back together. But it, it must be possible to get these out. I want, let's have a see if we can get the other one out from the other side. So obviously they're, they're no good now anyway, so... It isn't moving at all. Okay, never mind. So it looks like it'll have to be taken to the dump, which I had a feeling it might do. The bearings are knackered, so I'm not going to be able to get it out of the back of the tub, so unfortunately be going to the dump in bits like the uh, tumble dryer did. Well you can't say I didn't have a go trying to uh, get them out but I will uh, get the spider off. Let's have a quick look and see what sort of size that is. Another 10 mil. Um, what I'm doing now, basically, I'm sorry about that, I forgot about how the, uh, having got the camera focused on that. I'm just trying to get, basically, the uh, spider off the top of the drum, so we can have a look at the other side of that. I wasn't going to get rid of this machine, basically, without doing a post-mortem on it, so I could have a look at uh, the state of this, because uh, everyone always wonders, don't they, I suppose, what their spider looks like in their own machine, because you can't really ever get to it until you completely take the machine to bits. This is. But it sort of has it has put my mind at rest really to to know that I was looking after the machine properly and that the spider wasn't being damaged with all deposits that goes in up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this video, um, see this little set of videos, the, uh, the post-mortem effectively, uh, having a good look at whether we could have repaired it. I'm sure some people might say, oh, you could have got that done there and out of there if you'd have done this, this and this and this, but to be honest, I don't think it's worth bothering with really.
Right, now how easy will this come out? And again it's covered in grease. There we go. That basically is your drum spider. And that, I think, if we look at that, that's testament to me really of looking after this machine properly in all the time I've had it. Because I think that, that spider is in really, really good condition considering that this is an 11 year old machine. And it's also testament really to LG and the fact that they um, do produce a spider that will last the test of time. Well, for me it did anyway. The only thing that failed on this machine really was I think that the shock absorbers have gone on there because they've leaked oil, both of them. And if they hadn't have gone, they wouldn't have leaked oil. Um, and basically the drum bearings have worn and got noisy. So, the one time you could get the, um, the rear part of the drum like that, the actual assembly with the bearings in, but I don't think they're available anymore. I think it's obsolete now. This is, I'm not sure that you could actually even get that part, and it's expensive as well. You get the drum rear part like that complete with the bearings in. And I think they must have been over 100 quid just for that when they did supply them. I mean, look at that heater as well, how clean that is. There's no scale at all on there, so all this, all this rubbish about cowl gone, you need all that. Well, I live in a hard water area in Stoke. You know, we get lime scale forming, it forms in the kettle. That's full of lime scale in there. So, the heater on the washing machine, there's no lime scale at all on it, it's clean. So that's a good thing as well. Um, these shock absorbers, I can't really pull them in and out. I'm holding this camera in one hand. Let's just have a quick see if we can. Oh, it's come out all together, and there's no oil in it at all. How about that? You pull it, and the whole lot just comes out. There's nothing in there. So I mean. How would that act as a shock absorber if there was no... Well it wouldn't really, would it? There's actually nothing inside these. Anyway, my camera battery is running out on me. Um, we're going to say goodbye to it now in pieces. It might be worth me keeping that spider. You never know. Get rid of the rest of it. I might even try and sell that on uh, eBay. People need those, don't they? We'll see what I can salvage out of it, and then uh, probably scrap the rest. But uh, that's it. The end of life. The end of life for the WM14225. It wasn't going to go to the Heart Foundation with knacker bearings, so... I shall see you all on the next video, which will probably be about vacuum cleaners, but for now, and from the LG, See you again.